What's going on, my friends and my fellow DGens? Welcome to episode 17 of the Axis of Combat podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Boogie Kahuna, aka Ray, aka Big Boogie, my co host. Who would have boss? Who go got next? You already know. And before we get into any of these fights and recapping any of these bets, ladies and gentlemen, you already know the routine. Like, follow, subscribe, comment on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And everybody watching on YouTube right now, hit that notification bell to stay up to date. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and, you know, whatever else y'all want to do on the page. <laughs> and for all of our audio listeners, you already know Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts. Love you all. But um, before we jump into this card... We're going to recap some bets from this weekend. Me and my brother had uh, subpar weekends. You know, we broke even on a lot of places. Um, but my brother, um, uh, let's start with my brother's bets. One, one and one third of a unit on Belbita Moneyline. Payday, payday. <laughs> I take it. Payday. I take it. That's, that my, was, only, that's that was, my only payday. No. Nah. <laughs> Dvorak inside the distance. Oh, no, wait, hold on. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yep. Build a sub? Nope. Damn, I'm hitting the wrong yeah, button. No, I'm fumbling. I'm you fumbling. You cap it, bro. <laughs> you cap it on your bets. I wish I, I wish I won all these, boy. <laughs> um, Jasmine J. I, I, I pronounce her name because I'm going to butcher it. Jasmine Vicious. Be a decision. Chris Curtis. Money line, half a unit. Chris Curtis decision, um, half a, uh, one quarter of a unit. Those are a pass, so... I'll take it because it goes right back into the bank. <laughs> Darius money line, Aldana money line, <laughs> and half a unit on a parlay for Malat and Fugit. Fight starts round two. Nunez Aldana fight starts round three. For myself, Jasmine J half a unit. Imovov pass because the fight ended in a headbutt. Andre Mark Andre Barry you money line. Aldana Aldana Nunez fight to start round three. Oh, you get to go in order, and I don't know. Darius and Aldana money lines. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I got it. I got it. Jumping around. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Belbita Oliveira <laughs> two and a half rounds. Malaf Fugit fight does not go the distance. Hit on those, but Builder blew up three of my parlays, ladies and gentlemen, including this one. Um, Imovov, um, Curtis, Barryut Anders over a round and a half. Builder is my third leg on that one. Buried on that one. Imavolf Curtis. Nunez Aldana over a round and a half. Builder my third leg. Yeah. And my only parlay that I hit of the night. Belbita Oliveira fight to start round three. Imavolf uh, Curtis fight to start round three. Nunez Aldana fight to start round two. Payday. Payday. Mm. You want payday. So te terrible night with some, some of these picks. Built, well, Builder just blew up. Builder was the one underlying factor for me. Um, I put him in too many spots. My apologies, ladies and gents, for people who mirrored me. But if you did mirror my unit size, you did break even. But on to the next one. And um, anything you got to say about your bets before we move on? Anyway, we got uh, <laughs> UFC uh, 70. What's this? 70 what? <laughs> 75 i think it's 75 yeah let's uh, you know <laughs> decent you know it's decent sized card here you know 14 fights sleeper card low-key there's some fun fights on here yeah yeah there's some fun fights there's some very close fights yeah um i think the uh bookies did a really good job and you know lining some of these fights and i think uh, the ufc did a really good job in matchmaking some of these fights because you know these are solid fights overall i think absolutely let's kick it off brother all right Fight number one to kick off the prelims, the curtain jerker. Pause. We got Modeskis Bukowskis going against Zach Pauga. The, the Baltic Gladiator is 14 and 5. Three fight winning streak, hailing from Lithuania. 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 Am I saying that right? I think you got it. Ugh. 29 years old, going against the Ripper, Zach Pauga. Mm. Six and one, won in his last fight. Fighting uh, 35 years old, fighting out of Colorado, United States. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, Bukowskis coming off a uh, uh, you know, mediocre win over Tyson Pedro. Before that, 
long time recovery because he uh, tore his knee fighting against uh, what's his name, Khalil Roundtree when he hit him with that uh, that kick. Was That's that, yeah, what's, that, what's the name of that kick? It's like an oblique kick. Yeah, hit him with an oblique kick and destroyed his knee. Um, he's a striker. Low output though. He likes to work off his back foot. Uh, Zach Pauga, coming off a uh, a barn burner yawn. Psych. <laughs> uh, when he fought uh Jordan Wright, and then before that got uh slept by uh. The Wack Usman. What's his name? Muhammad. Muhammad. Muhammad Usman. Oh, man. This fight stinks. It sucks. I think. I'm leaning. Man, I don't know who I'm leaning in this fight. I want to. The problem is, is that Bukowski is the way he fights. He likes to fight off his back foot. Like I said. And Zach Pauga, the way he won his last fight, even though it wasn't like the most spectacular way. I mean, he didn't. He dominated Zach. Uh, no, nah, what's his name? Jordan Wright. He should have clapped him up because that's the longest fight Jordan Wright's ever been in in his life. <laughs> but I could see Zach probably grinding this one out to a boring, a boring win. Yep. But only reason why I don't really want to put money on Zach is because I don't trust his chin. And even though Bukowskis is low output, he got you know he's. He's got heavy hands, so hey, this might be a pass for me overall, but I think I'm leaning Zach to win. I don't know. What about you? Yeah, everything you said, um, Zach is the lean for me too, but I am definitely not putting my money anywhere near this fight. Zach uh, is in the history books of being the only guy to take the Beverly Hills Ninja to decision. Everyone else finished him in the UFC, Bruh. and then the Beverly Hills Ninja proceeded to get cut after that fight. And um, his name is the Ripper. The only thing you're going to be ripping is your bet slip when this guy doesn't, <laughs> when this fight doesn't go to decision because of his chin. So Zach Buga is the lean, but that's all this fight is getting from me because the, both these guys, for the most part, horrible fighter, horrible fighter. Nabukowski's as much. I like him off his back foot. He's a pretty good fighter. Knows how to glide to get in and out. But Zach Buga, man, oh man, I I ain't giving this fight any of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So. It, it, yeah, Zach Puga, no bet. <laughs> if you thought I was going to bet. Stupid, I'm not going to let you get the chance. Nope. On to the next one. <laughs> All right, next fight we got here in the Bantamweight division. It's Ronnie the Heat Lawrence going against Daniel the Determined Argetta. Uh, the Heat, 8-2. and two. Lost his last fight, but he is uh, currently 4-1 and one out of his last five, fighting out of uh, Nashville, Tennessee, 31 years old, going against Daniel the Determined Argetta, who is 9-1, also 4-1 and one out of his last five, won his last fight, fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, 29 years old. This fight is going to be pretty interesting. This is like grappler versus grappler, essentially. Ronnie Lawrence kind of got dog-walked his last fight uh, by uh, Kakramanov. I mean, Cock Romano kind of gave him the cock. That's what happened there. Oh. <laughs> hey. I mean, let's just keep it real because my man got whooped. <laughs> but before that, I mean, all his other fights, you know, Ronnie Lawrence, who I, I think has got better hands than Argetta. Uh, and his other previous fights, you know, the way he won was just takedown, 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 takedown. Argetta made his debut against... Um, uh, what's uh, what's justified's name? I forgot his name. Damon Jackson. <laughs> that was like justified. last minute <laughs> upper weight class, and you know he stood his ground, lost that fight. But uh, and then after that, I think Dog walked uh, Al Geary. Yeah, where he was able to take him down and kind of just do what he wanted there. Uh, I'm leaning Ronnie. Ronnie's got the better hands of the two, and I think you know usually when you see uh, grappler versus grappler. Or wrestler versus wrestler. It usually is just a stand-up fight. I think what's going to be key in this fight is can Argetta hold Ronnie Lawrence down? Ronnie, like I said, got the cock from Kokoranov. But um, Argetta it's like okay so there is like there is two different forms of grappling here right because we got Ronnie Lawrence who doesn't who's who never went to high school for grappling or college for grappling he's got MMA grappling so there's 
pros and cons to that. Argetta has a wrestling background. He knows how to uh, control grapple. But we never, uh, we haven't seen him really fight anybody at, you know, Ronnie Lawrence's level. No. Here. So I'm going to lean Ronnie, but it's going to be pretty interesting to see if Argetta is able to control Ronnie on the ground. Because I think he's going to try to, if between the two, he's going to be the one that's going to want it on the ground. Because uh, he can't really stand. And he's got terrible uh, striking defense. And if, if it stays standing, Ronnie's going to piece him up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm with you there. I don't know if this fight's going to get any of my money, but I, everything you said was pretty spot on, even with the wrestling background. Um, Ronnie, the taller guy, David, um, David Daniel, the, um, the longer reach. Still can't, still don't know if I want to touch this fight because I feel like this is a proven fight for these boys. Um, but Ronnie Lawrence is definitely the better fighter and definitely fought the better brand in competition. So, yeah, I'm with you there. He's the lean. Don't know if I'm going to bet this. But, yeah, we can move on. Next fight we have here is Teresa Blada going against Gabriela Fernandez. Uh, Blada here is 6-1. and one, Lost her last fight. That was her UFC debut against Natalia Silva. Uh, fighting out of the Czech Republic. 21 years old. Going against uh, Gabby Fernandez here, who was 8-2. Also lost her debut UFC fight against Jasmine Jasnavigius. Fighting out of uh, Brazil, 29 years old. Uh, this is a striker versus grappler. Uh, I'm going to lean... Uh, what's her name here? Blada here. I think... The problem with Fernandez is she has two holes in her game. And this is a quick turnaround because she literally fought two weeks, not two weeks, two months ago. She has terrible takedown D and she has terrible stand up. Not the stand up like she can't get up. So I think uh, I think Blada takes her down and I think uh, maybe the under hit on this. That's the way I feel about this fight, pretty much. Yeah, this fight, I'm probably with you on Blader just because her nickname is Ronda. Yeah, and, uh, I skipped over the nicknames because they both have terrible nicknames. Terrible nicknames, you know. But, Ronda uh, and Gabby. This is a very nice. low-level fight. It's very scary, and the thing is, Blader at minus 230, one thing we've learned about low-level MMA, ladies and gentlemen, is do not put your hard-earned money on it unless, you know, they have a background like Chris Leroy Duncan where they have like 22 per 22 amateur fights and they only have eight professional fights. These young ladies don't have that. Um, this fight is a big stay away from me, man, because I don't know which way it can go. But the lean is definitely Blada for the reasons that my brother listed. But um, God, you know, this is number one bullshit. Yeah, this fight is uh, this fight betting wise is number one bullshit. I am definitely not putting minus 230 on Blada. Hell no. She's not going in my parlays. Um, and then you're right, usually for low-level women's MMA, or low-level MMA in general, you know, not to me, you know, on the prejudice side here, but it's <laughs> betting-wise, just the swings with low-level women's MMA, the swings are pretty sporadic. Um, and the thing is, too, Blada does finish. So it's like, I'm not sure if this fight goes the distance, so usually I would probably take the overs. Can't do that either. So this fight's a big stay away from me, but Blade is definitely in the lean. All right, next fight we have here is Felipe, the debuting Felipe Bunes, going against the probably soon exiting Zalgas Zamagulov. Uh, Felipe Bunes is 13 and 6, making his debut. He is 3 and 2 out of his last five. Uh, fighting, hailing from Brazil, 33 years old. Going against Zalgas Zamagulov, 14 and 8 on a three fight losing streak. He's four out of, well, he's one and four out of his last five. Fighting out of Ak Toby Kazakhstan, 34 years old. I feel like they. This is a uh, pretty even fight. I I'm gonna lean Bunez here. I went back and forth with this. I was initially on the Zalga side because I feel like oh, the UFC is gonna try to get this guy a win. The problem with Zalgas is he kind of fights. He kind of fights close in every fight. There's, there's no really like pulling away in, in, in most of his fights. 
And Boone is ain't. A, I, when I was looking at you know stuff on YouTube for him, like he ain't a bum. I don't think he's a bum at all. Trains with the uh, Pitbull brothers. I think he's very active on his back. You know, his jujitsu is slick. Very op- opportunistic with his submissions. He's got solid hands, fast hands. I don't know, man. I don't. This it's the more I think about it, the more I think Bunez is gonna is gonna beat the brakes off of uh, Zalgas here. I don't. I think this fight probably goes the distance because they're both tough dudes. But uh, I'm leaning Bunez here. Yeah, I I like I like um. I'm so torn on this fight for a couple of reasons. I want to see how these guys look on the scale. That's one. Bunez has a significant size advantage on on Zalgas as well. But what I will say is you can't look at Zalgas' record as like, it can be a little misleading because I think he's like one in four in the UFC when he realistically could be like four and two. Um, well, actually, that's the math is wrong there. One in five, but he could be four and two. Um, you know, he, he there's not a lot, like the judges don't like this guy. This guy literally got a Patty Pimblin haircut hoping that he would get the judges to sway to their side on a bullshit decision, you know? So, you know, this is number one it's, um, it's, it, I feel bad for Zalgas, you know, cause I feel like they're kind of feeding him to the wolves at this point, because like my brother said, I don't think he's, he doesn't really have big moments in fights. He just knows how to control the fight and then kind of try to slide through with a win, but he just not, he just has not had the best luck in the UFC with the judging. And um, this fight might low key be a stay away for me or just p- picking um, Felipe Boons at plus 140 because the dimensions, his dimensions as well as his technique, as my brother said, with his slickness on the floor and um, his hand speed. So, but Bunez might be a live dog bet here. So, you know, um, I would not be surprised if I laid uh, money on Bunez um, as, a, as, a, as a dog play. So, next fight we have here is Carlos Hernandez versus Denise Bondar. Carlos Hernandez is eight and two. Four and one out of his last five. Lost his last fight. 29 years old, fighting, fighting out of Illinois. Going against Psycho Denise Bondar. 16 and four. Four and one out of his last five, but also lost his last fight. Fighting, hailing from the Ukraine, 30 years old. This is another fight where uh, uh, I feel like Bondar is probably going to be the side for me. I know there was a lot of hype. For him, when he uh, initially uh, made his debut, and uh, you know they set him up real nice against Malcolm Gordon, and then you know, eighty seconds into that fight, had a crazy injury where he tried to post and ended up dislocating his elbow. Carlos Hernandez had a solid fight against uh, what's that guy's name? Alta Marino won that fight. Won that fight. Solid fight. Solid back and forth. But then got dog walked immediately after by uh, Alan Nascimento. I don't know. I feel like uh, Carlos Hernandez is like he kind of he'll kind of take the fight wherever you want to take the fight. I don't think he's got the uh, punching power to really get anybody out of there. From what I've seen from Dennis uh, Bundar, it looks like he's got the better striking and the better grappling. But you know the kind of argument of that is that you know he's really fought like taxi drivers and you know. Bums, cooks, and bums like they pay guys yeah. to come off the street to fight him in the Ukraine, man. Like yeah. that's that's and just keep it real. And he's not even training like he's not even before like you know because you know everything that's happening in the Ukraine right now. He hasn't really been in the Ukraine, so I don't know what he's really doing training wise or fighting wise at the moment. But yeah, I'm with you, man. Uh, you know, not to jump in, but yeah, like it's um, you know. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. I am not putting any money near this fight. And Bandar should win this fight. But just for that point alone, if you just look at the level of competition, these four guys that are 19 and 13, 7 and 4, 3 and 4. Yeah. Like just, you know, combined record. The combined record of his opponents is shit. Like actual shit. So, you know. Big stay away from me for this fight, man. I don't know if I'm going to bet the rounds. Like, I mean, big stay away from the pick. I don't know if I'm going to bet the rounds. I have to do a little more research into that. But, yeah, this guy is literally for bums. Like, literally, they pay a bum on the corner and say, yo, you want some food for tonight? Come come, come move with my man real quick. Then they yeah. walk into the arena. That's, uh, that's they're like, I, oh, shit, this is a big event. What? <laughs> <laughs> so they get their ass whooped, and then they get their milk and cereal for dinner. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> send them on their way. You know, take your government food and take, get out of my face. Get out of here, you know? 
Fight it, kid. Yeah, this fight, uh, just for that reason. And then, you know, even the Malcolm X, because he had, it was a freakish injury. But the thing is, it's because Malcolm X had him tight in that armbar. He rolled through it. He fought through the pain. But yeah. the reason why his elbow popped like that was because of the, the transition with the armbar. So, you know, if Malcolm X Gordon's getting you in armbars. I mean, listen. I don't want to shit on no, Malcolm no, no. X Gordon. Let, let's, but, let, let's, let's pause here. Because I don't think Malcolm X, I don't think Malcolm Gordon is bad, right? He is low tier, though. He's like a glass cannon, right? Yep. Where I, I don't think his offense was ever his problem. I think it was always Malcolm's defense that was the problem. You yeah. know? So, and kind of this is kind of almost the way I kind of see Carlos Hernandez here. You know, he's got the output, but, you know, he's got pillow hands. So I don't think, you know, he couldn't crush a grape in a fruit fight. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think he's going to really damage Bondar here. He could knock it out of a bag. Well, a wet paper bag, right? <laughs> That's the same. <laughs> Go ahead. But uh, from what I've seen, again, he, I mean, he's wrestling taxi drivers, but it looks like he's got decent grappling skills. Bondar. Yeah. And Hernandez was getting, was being taken down by Alta Marino. And I don't think Alta Marino, like Alta Marino, like his game is more like I'm going to stand and bang with you. So yeah. you got that guy taking you down or at least giving you some trouble. Eh, question know, marks. Yeah, it's a big question mark for me. So. For me, the lean is Bondar. Don't know if I'm going to bet it, though. We can move on. Yep. Next fight we have here is Kyung Ho Kang going one-on-one -on -one with Christian Kiones. Mr. Perfect Kyung Ho Kang is 18-9. and nine. Four and one out of his last five. Won his last fight. 35 years old. Fighting out of Busan, South Korea. Going against the Problema. Christian Quinones. 18 and 3. He's five out of his last five. 27 years old, hailing from Zacatecas, Mexico. <laughs> uh, I think this this is a 50 50 fight for me. Kyung Ho Kang, the vet, been in the UFC for about 10 years plus. Uh his last fight. Showed another a new wrinkle in his game where he jabbed uh, Baccarel to death. Jabbed and leg kicked Baccarel to death. Kept him on the outside and kind of just, you know, decision, you know, jabbed his way to a victory there, to a decision. Uh Kiones. Who did he fight last? Kali Taha. I remember that fight. He uh kind of stood on the outside. He knows how to use his range. He knows Taha. All he all Taha has was a, you know. A bomb of a is it left hand or right hand, whatever. So he kind of just like set him up a little bit, lured him in, and then just banged on him there. Hey, yo. <laughs> I feel like Kiones, I mean, he is the younger of the two, right? Like, well, he got like seven years on him, eight years. Mm -hmm. He could win this. Like, Kang is not a guy that, you know, he's smart. He's a smart dude. His IQ is up there. I can see this fight going to decision. I can see this fight going to distance. So maybe the overs are the way to play this fight. When it comes to a winner, oh man, I don't know. This one's tough. Maybe I'm going to lean. I think Kung Ho's the king. I'm mean, Kung Ho's the king. <laughs> Kung Ho's the dog. <laughs> oh, shit. I think Kang's the dog, but he's probably like the slight dog. Uh, Damn. I'm going to lean Kionis here. What about you? This fight, I'm still undecided because it is a close fight. I don't know who to pick in this fight um, for all the reasons you named above. And um, I'm going to get back to you guys on this. You lean on my brother's, you lean on my brother's uh, analysis there because it's pretty spot on. So I, I, I don't know who to pick. I'm very torn on this fight. So Yeah, I think I'm going to lean Kiones, but eh. I don't know. And that's sort of probably just the youth, right? I think the bet is probably uh, any, maybe the overs, to be honest. Or the dog. Oh, yeah. This might be a yeah. dog or pass fight, man. 50 50 fight? Yeah, maybe just lean with the dog. Lean with the dog. Kyung Hong Kang is plus 135. I don't know. I'm a little up, like my, like my brother, I'm a little up in the air in this fight. This fight is actually kind of close. It's so. competitive as shit. Yeah. That much I do know. So, um, but yeah, we can move on to the next one. All right, next fight we have here is the unretired Jimmy Flick going against Alessandro Costa. Jimmy the Brick Flick, pause, 16-6, and six, lost his last fight, but he is uh, currently 
four and one out of his last five, fighting out of Sand Springs, Oklahoma, 32 years old, going against Nono Alessandro Costa. Costa. 12 and three, lost his last fight. That was his debut against uh, Albazi, if I remember correctly. Yep. Uh, he is hailing from Brazil, but training out of Mexico, 27 years old. I'm going to lean Alessandro Cosa here. It's a pretty easy bet. My I, I, and what makes it easier, because the problem is, is like when you watch the Albaz, uh, the Albazi fight, he really didn't do anything to impress me there. And, you know, Jimmy Flick is, he's sub bust, in my opinion. I agree. But digging into uh, Costa here, he has a black belt under uh, Diego... Uh, What's the guy's name? The um, Diego, uh, the guy who just fought Evelev. Oh, yeah, I can't remember his name. Well, he, you know, and that's the same guy that uh, coaches um, Grasso and uh, Diego Lopez. There you go, Diego Lopez. Yeah, same. He's the same. He's the head coach for. He's head jujitsu coach for Grasso and um, Aldana. Yep, you know, didn't really do anything for Aldana, but yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just gonna rely on Costa to, you know, be able to flick off Jimmy Flick, and you know, I don't know how he's gonna win this fight, but I think the lean is Costa. I, I think Costa probably stops him. You think so? Jimmy, Jimmy's a first round. He's glass cannon. You know, he you you touch him Augusta winning, he does the chicken dance, you know what I'm saying? So I'm fading Jimmy Flick in this fight, man. Super necessary. He super necessary to flick flick that dude, flick that dude out of, you know. Flick him out of flick here. Flick him out of here, man. You know, so it's it's um no flick disrespect to him. He just came back off a long layoff. I think he thought it was gonna be easy for him. He comes back older, um, less he, durable. Like he, there's a lot of things that if he doesn't get you on the first round of submission, it's a wrap. Yeah, he got like a, a lucky because he was losing the fight against Durden. Yeah, got some crazy lucky flying uh, head and arm. Yeah, triangle. Yep, and then against you know uh, Charles Johnson, he got uh, oh. he pretty much got he got ass he looked. got beat from pillar to post. There. He got he really, ass yeah. looked. Yeah, like you know he's you know to be honest, a nice play might be submission only for this fight. Maybe because does Costa have any uh, six six, six of submissions? Them. Six of his six of his twelve wins, he's got six wins for your sub. And this, but Jimmy's never been submitted, right? Nope, he's never yeah, been. Submitted. Yeah, but he, I can see him getting tired, and then he's, it's crazy. He's never been subbed. That is kind of crazy. But I wouldn't be surprised in his old age that that happens. But if not, probably just Alessandro Costa to finish because maybe maybe the KO. To I think honest. to finish, yeah, because Jimmy's gonna get tired. And he's gonna get smashed. Yeah, like that's what's gonna happen. You know. So if you guys want, like, there's another live bet spot. Wait till after the first round to bet this fight. And then you just smash um, Costa after the first round because Jimmy Flick's only got like maybe three minutes of gas and then it's a wrap. But yeah, fade that boy quickly. Super necessary. Straight up, you know? So um, yeah, that's all I got to say about this one. All right, next fight we have here is Ronnie Barcelos going one-on-one -on -one with Miles Johns. Barcelos, the vet, 17-4. and four, Two and three out of his last five, hailing from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, 36 years old. Going against Miles Chapo Johns. 13 and 2. 3 and 2 out of his last five. Fighting out of Dallas, Texas, 29 years old. I feel like this one is also a little bit of a no brainer. I think this is Barcelos all day. I mean, he's coming off a brutal knockout from Umar Nurmagomedov. That's Umar, man. But I mean, it's Umar, first of all. Second of all, the way he set that up. He didn't see that punch coming at all. He was so focused on Umar's knee. Yep. That when Umar came with the overhand, just it just straight just I don't know. It was just the, the technique behind that that KO was kind of nuts. Yeah, and the thing is Ronnie Ronnie was having his moments in that fight before yes. that happened, mm -hmm. which is crazy. The only thing I worry about Ronnie is his age. That's it. His age and his durability, but it is Umar Nurmagomedov that knocked him out. Umar's a future champion in my opinion. Um he's that good at 135. Yeah. Um, and the problem is that Miles Johns doesn't do anything better than Ronnie Barcelos. The only thing he might have over Ronnie is, it, is, is, the, is power. You, but he does, you, I don't think he has the uh, the tech, the punch, the striking technique to set up something like Umar did. So yeah. it's like, you know. And you want the real, that's questionable too because Ronnie hits like a truck. 
I mean, Ronnie does hit like a truck. He does hit like but a truck. But I mean, if you had to, you know, highlight one thing from Miles Johns, I, you know, yeah, when comparing him to Barcelos, I think it's it's probably just the raw power. To, maybe to be you honest, know? he's at minus two fifteen right now. I might just take that. I don't like betting things over minus two hundred, but I feel like this is the easiest one of the yeah, easiest it, bets on the card. And it's a little scary because when you say easiest bet, like you know, not every you no. Know, listen, in the UFC, there's never no, there's no such thing as a free square. I mean, but this feels like a free fucking square to me. Yeah, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, no disrespect to Miles Johns, man. Like, he couldn't win this fight. He's very capable of winning this fight. I j it's just that Ronnie, I think Ronnie's a coral belt, coral belt in jiu-jitsu, man. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah. You don't see too many of those in the UFC, man. And this, he's legit on the floor. His wrestling is pretty good. His punching power is really good, and he's slick on the feet. The only thing that's going against him is his age. His age, and if you want to question his chin, but I think anyone who gets hit like that by Umar gets knocked out. You know, before that, he was on the tear. So, nah, man, I like Ronnie here. And he's at minus 215. I might just take him at it. I might just take him there straight on principle just because I think he's going to win this fight. All right, next fight we have kicking off the main card. We have Muslim Sil Salikov going one on one with Nicholas Dalby, the king of kung fu. Muslim Salikov, oh yeah, nineteen and three, won his last fight. He is uh, five and one overall. It is this is all, Bruce Lee shit. Five and one out of his last five, uh, fighting out of I don't know where the hell is this Russia. Thirty nine years old, going against Nicholas the Danish Dynamite Dalby, twenty four. 21 4 and 1. He is uh, 3 1 and 1 out of his last five, fighting out of Denmark, 38 years old. So we got two older dudes here uh, in the welterweight division. The way I kind of lean this fight, I, I think me and my brother are probably going to disagree here. I'm kind of leaning Muslim here. I think Salikov, uh, tough dude. He can, he can knock you out with all four limbs. And that'll be another tough dude. I don't, I don't know, man. I, I just see that man go down every time in his fight. I mean, he does, again, he's tough out. I, I don't, I think every one of his wins and law, I mean, decision, I think he's the decision master over here. He's got 11 decision wins, four decision losses. And I think literally every one of his fights in the UFC, except for the Jesse Ronson fight have been decision and i'm i'm just gonna lean salikov here i think i i think he's he's gonna win the moments he's gonna secure two rounds and maybe the bet for this fight is probably this fight to go to decision because i also think both guys very durable i don't think anybody's getting anybody out of here even though it's gonna at moments it's gonna look kind of crazy uh, I can see this fight going the distance. I can see the overs hitting. That's probably going to be the bet for the fight. I got to look a little more into it. But the lean to make a pick for pick's sake, I think I'm going to be leaning Salikov. My brother, who do you have? Salikov should win this fight from a tactical standpoint on the feet. But I'm going to lean Dalby here just because Dalby, um, I think this fight's going to be close. And I'd rather be on the plus side of the money. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I think... He's plus 160. I feel like that's a little disrespectful to how close this fight can be. Salikov, the only issue I have with Salikov is two things. He did show that he did kind of gas his last fight. He did fight Fialo. He did pack up Fialo late in the fight. But the thing is, Fialo had his moments in that fight, and Fialo doesn't have the best chin. I think Dalby's going to be able to walk through his shots, make it a dirty, grindy fight, and I could see this fight. I definitely see this fight going to decision because... Salikov, he can knock you out, but he doesn't really knock out a ton of people. He knocks out some people. Um, Fialo, everyone's knocking out Fialo these days. Unfortunately, I love Andre Fialo, man. All my Portuguese homies out there, my my my, my bad. <laughs> I don't mean to disrespect y'all, man, but that's just real. But um, the king of Kung Fu. This is Bruce Lee shit. Um, I think um, he should win this fight from a technical application, but I do. I, the one, if I had to lean who has more of the grappling application, it's Nicholas. Yeah. Nicholas can lean on his wrestling sometimes and win minutes, you know, doesn't use it much, but especially with this guy, he might go to it fast. And I think if this fight's going to be close or a dog fight towards the end, my money's going to be on the bigger dog. And I'm going to go with uh, Nicholas Dalby here. Um, don't know if I'm going to make a bet on it. Um, but um, what I will say is that um, Nicholas Dalby has all the capability of winning this fight. 
And at plus 160, I think that's real value there. Dog money, by the way. <laughs> All right, next fight we have here. Nicholas Mota going against Manuel Torres in the lightweight division. We have Iron Nicholas Mota, 13 and 4, 4 and 1 out of his last five. Hailing from Brazil, fighting out of Las Vegas, 30 years old, going against Manuel El Loco Torres, 13 and 2, 5 and 1 out of his last five. Hailing from Mexico, fighting out of Mexico, 28 years old. This is another fight where I think me and my brother are going to be opposite ends, but I think one thing that we can agree on is that there's going to be violence. I, I don't think this fight goes the distance. Maybe I might look at the under two and a half here, maybe even under one and a half. Torres has never been out of the first round. Nicholas Moda, deadly counter striker, in my opinion. Uh, this fight is going to be a banger either way. I think I slightly lean Nicholas. I think he's it's mostly because he's fought the better brand and uh, he's a little more proven. But I mean, Manuel Torres, he's got all the uh, physical gifts. He's going to be the taller, longer guy. And uh, I think either way, this fight doesn't go. It doesn't, it, it, it barely makes the third round. I don't think he's going to make it to this judge's scorecards at all. What about you, my brother? How do you feel about this fight? Violence for sure. People going to bleed. Is the answer. It's going to get cut open and somebody might die. Somebody might just. Um, yeah. Someone's going to get murked in this fight. Um, here's what I will say to you. Name someone that Nicholas Moda has beaten. Not name, n not name um, Jim Miller. Because the other only other guy that he's fought in the UFC is Cameron Van Camp, and that dude has a glass chin, glass. I mean, you Augusta can't, wind, and he does the chicken dance, my look, boy. You can't look too deep into that one, though. Know what I'm saying, like, I hear you, but you know what? Listen, Jim Miller packed him up, and Jim Miller's an 80 year old man. I mean, but like, I mean, just go down the resume here. I mean, he's got UFC experience, even though these guys haven't fought in the UFC. Whoa. Not that he, like, he fought Joe Selecki outside of the UFC. He fought Robert Hale outside of the UFC. These are, those are, I think those are good, two good names. That Robert Hale fight, even though he lost that fight, was kind of sick. Yeah, I don't know. And then Jim Miller, like, I feel like that's a loss that's kind of aging really good because Jim Miller's still knocking out fools. Yeah. That dude, he's, I mean, Jesus Christ. That guy's, his hands are nuts, so... Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not trying to, I'm, I, I'm just not a, I'm not the biggest fan of Moda. I think Moda's a super one-dimensional fighter. Um, and, and I think that's where I'm at with it. Maybe my bias is speaking here on behalf of how I feel about him, but I, I'm just not a big fan of his style. He comes to crack and that's it, but he doesn't really do anything else besides, I don't think he's going to win this fight with anything else besides that one punch that he can land on him, you know? He throws volume. He throws a decent amount of volume. He has extreme punching power, but not impressed, man. Not impressed. And I, I know people are like, oh, well, you know, Torres beat Frank Camacho. Sure, bro. Frank Camacho is still super durable, even at his older age. So the fact that Manuel Torres packed him up like that and with pretty good technique, and he does have a ground game, I kind of like um, Manuel Torres here. Um, don't know if I'm going to put this kind of money on him because I think when people are trying to I think both of these fighters are in a position where they're still trying to prove themselves to like betters, in my opinion. The lean's Manuel Torres, but I don't know if I'm gonna put any money near this fight. Just because like this is their second or third fight in and I haven't seen shit that makes me feel compelled to, you know, give them any of my money, you know? So Yeah. Might be a big stay away. We'll see. We'll see come fight time. I wanna see how these guys look on a scale and all that extra shit, and then we'll know more or less where I stand with this. So but anyway, on to the next one. All right, next fight we have here in the middleweight division. We have Christian Leroy Duncan going against Armin Petrosian. CLD, Christian Leroy Duncan, is 8-0, 8 out of his last 8, fighting out of England, 27 years old, going against Superman Armin Petrosian, 7-2, 3-2 out of his last 5, fighting out of Armenia, 32 years old, my lean here is going to be uh, Christian Leroy Duncan. Um, this dude is like super athletic, super talented. 
And usually in a lot of his fights, he's got to worry about people trying to grapple him. Petrosian's not going to try to grapple him. And I think that, that you know, that's right into Leroy Duncan's uh, wheelhouse. You know, if you don't got to worry about the grappling, this is going to be a strike for strike match. And I think strike for strike, I mean, does he get him out? I don't know, but... I think he I think I see Duncan being the more dynamic, more talented striker overall. And I'm nothing against uh Petrosian because I think that he's a hell of a fighter too, but Lean is going to be uh Leroy Duncan. What about you? Yeah, I agree with that. And I agree with that because I think Christian Leroy Duncan outside of um what you didn't mention, which I know you know, but super durable. Yeah. Can lean on his wrestling. And definitely has the punching power. The punching and the kicking power. This boy could knock you out with any any limb on his body. And I agree. He's the more dynamic striker. Um, Armin's more like the lineal. He's a, he's a traditional kickboxer. Like, you know, left, right. You know, Christian Leroy Duncan is angles. Left to diagonal, left to right. You know, coming in, popping and popping you with a right hand. Dropping you with big shots. And um, this guy completely causes havoc. I always looked at his fights, especially when he was an amateur and some of his earlier pro fights. And I always said he was like a bigger Tony Ferguson. Like he goes in there and he just causes havoc. He just causes chaos. And it's not the kind of fight that Armin likes to be in. And you've seen it kind of evidenced in the Kyle Bar- Barhio fight. Because after a while, you can see how discouraged Armin got. Because Kyle just kept causing havoc to get to the takedown. And Christian's not going to do that with the takedown, but he's going to do that with the punching power and hurt him. Christian Leroy Duncan, and the thing is, the line is beautiful right now for him too. Um, Christian Leroy Duncan's a minus 155. And I love everything about that. To be honest, I'm going to let you guys know right now, he's going to get my money. He's going to get my money. And I think this kid is extremely talented and he can be a top 10 um, middleweight in my opinion. That's how good he is. Not that Armin's a pushover. I just like... The no, this is, it's a good test for him, you know. And it, and this is his real debut because yeah. the last fight kind of got stopped um, prematurely. I mean, uh, even not, though he was... he was uh, Like, that he, fight was going to end in a KO. Yeah. He was beating du, uh, Dusko to 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 Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. His last name's crazy. Yeah. But he, he, before the, the weirdness happened, I, I feel like that fight was going to end in KO. He was beating up uh, Dusko pretty bad. And that injury was caused by Christian Leroy Duncan. So, yeah. you know, I like Christian a lot right now at minus 155. He's definitely getting my money. I'm going to put money on this this dude, man. He's a bad motherfucker. That's that's the best way to say it. So, but proceed, sir. All right. Co-main event. <laughs> we have Armin Sarukian going against jo- Joaquin Silva. Armin Sarukian, I am not going to pronounce that man's nickname. That shit look like Anakanka and Kank. I don't know what the hell that says. Never mind. I gave up. 19 and 3. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is 4-1 at his last five. Also hailing from Armenia, but fighting out of Russia, 26 years old. Going going one-on-one with Joaquin Silva. Nito BJJ is his nickname. Okay. 12 and 3. He is uh, two and three out of his last five, fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 34 years old. Armin Sarukian, easy. Uh, his original opponent is supposed to be Moicano. That would have been a way better fight. Moicano ended up falling out. Uh, I think this is our, uh, this is Sarukian by however the hell he wants, probably in the first round. Stops him. I think the more interesting to talk, thing to talk about with Sarukian is who do, who's, who's, who, who's next. Yeah. Who's next? Does he call out Charles Oliveira? Does he call out Fazeev's? Does he wait for the winner of uh, Gaethje Poirier? Gaethje Poirier and says, give me somebody, please. Stop being pussies and fucking fight me. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure Silva was like the 12th or 13th guy they called, you know, wanting to fight this guy. It's it's insane. Yeah. It's insane the duckage on my boy Saruki in here. Yeah. So... This fight, demolition. They would have been Ben packing them up. There's the pack up of the week for sure. Armin yeah. Saruki is going to body bag this boy. And um, I don't, don't even know how this fight got sanctioned, if I'm being real. but <laughs> Sanctioned? I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I mean, listen, Silva ain't a bum, but, you know. Now, Armin, Armin's a future world champion. Yeah. He is. He's only, tw- I think he's only 26 years old. Yeah. He like, is. 
a minus one thousand favor as well. So. Yeah, you parlay the shit out of him. Don't I mean par- par- parlay parlay him to finish. Parlay he's gonna finish. Parlay the inside the distance maybe. Yeah, he's a bad motherfucker. You know, you want to get real greasy. I think the chances of him subbing him are probably less because you know I mean I think he mashes him. Silva is you know again his fucking nickname is Nito BJJ. You know. So we got a lot of balls taking this fight. I think the knockout is very live. If you want to do first round knockout, that's probably like, you know, probably the way to go because I think inside the distance is like minus 300 minus. It's something stupid. Like even that you have to parlay. You can't even play it straight. So it's like. Yeah, listen, and for you guys that don't know, Armin Sarukian, uh, UFC debut, Islam Makachev, and that fight was extremely competitive. He actually beat Islam on some of the grappling exchanges. You guys should watch that fight and admire how good this kid is. Like he's a he's a fucking beast, man. And um, he lost to Gamrat, but he won that fight. Yeah, he won that fight. Yeah. He, and he beat uh, Isma Gulov, who is a bad motherfucker, and he beat him decisively. Um, Armin Sarukian is the future of this division, and the problem that he's having is the same problem Islam was having, where people were complaining why Islam got a shot and he only fought Black Bobby Green before. The problem is no one's picking up their phone to answer, to fight this guy. Yep. Um, these they, these guys are the terrors of the division. But I'll be honest, there's a handful of people I would say maybe three people that can beat Islam Makachev right now. Armin Sarukian is one of them. And um, yeah, I think if they ran it back, oh my god, cause, I, considering how close that first fight was, it was, it was good. And, and the way Sarukin's been growing, bro, you he's know a, he's still young. He's twenty six, you know? dude. Hungry man, you know. So yeah, Islam. I'm not Islam. Armin, by however the fuck he wants, and yeah. that's it's as simple as that. So yeah, we can move on to the next fight. Uh, middleweight, we have Martin Vittori going one on one with Jared Cannonier, the Italian Dream. Martin Vittori, nineteen five and one, three and two out of his last five. Hailing from Italy, fighting out of Las Vegas, 29 years old, going against the killer gorilla Jared, Jared Cannonier, 16 and 6, 3 and 2 out of his last five. This is another one where uh, I think this fight's going to be closer than people think. I think this fight probably goes the distance. No question. That's the bet. So I think there's going to be a decision. If there's going to be a finish, it's going to be on the Cannonier side. Uh,. I was initially on Vittori. I still might be on Vittori just because, man, that, that guy is, uh, you know, the only two people to beat him ever, Whitaker and Israel Adesanya. I mean, yeah, dude's, dude's a dog. Dude's a dog. And he's 29 years old. Jared being 39 scares me a little bit. But, you know, me and my brother talking off camera. You know, I, you know what? I'll let, I'll let him explain because... I'm I'm I understand where he's coming from. It, 39 just kind of scares me just a little bit. Just just a little bit. But I mean, maybe by the end of the week, I'm probably on the Cannoneer side. But I don't know. I don't know where I'm at right now. I don't know where I'm at right now. It, this is a good fight though, but I do think it does go to distance. And, and from a betting perspective, I think the overs hit three and a half, four and a half distance. I think those are pretty safe. But in terms of a winner. It's, I'm, cl- it's tight fight. Right now, I'm Batori, but I ain't going to take too much convincing for me to get on the Cannoneer side because, I mean, he does have the power advantage for sure. And, I mean, IQ is probably like a toss up. I'm, I'll, probably give, I'll probably give Jared the IQ. How crazy is Yeah, it's, you it, know. Yeah, it, and let's go just ahead, to jump ahead. in, the, yeah, bet, jump the, in the, bet, the bet for this fight is definitely fight does not go, fight goes the distance at, at minus 165. Yeah. That's the bet. I'm going to place that bet. Um, so just so you guys have a heads up, but, um, what I will say is I know people are like just saying that Marvin's going to lean on him and do whatever he wants. Um, Jerry Cannonier has underrated takedown defense. Um, you can really only get him down if you hurt him. The better striker in this fight is going to be Jared. But what I will say is that Jared did give Stoutbender a lot of different looks during their fight. And Stoutbender even acknowledged it after the fight, how good Jerry Cannonier is. Um, and think about it. Who's beating Jerry Cannonier in the middleweight division? Rob Whitaker, Stylebender. That's it, I think. And I, at, at least in the, uh, at least in yeah. How crazy! All his other at losses, least in middleweight, yeah, yeah. All his other losses are at um, at a heavyweight, heavyweight and light heavyweight, you know. But he beat up Derek Brunson. He beat up Calvin Gastelum. He beat up Sean Strickland. Um, he he lost his last his last two losses before Stylebender and Whitaker were Dominic Reyes and John Blahovich. 
John, did, did John take him down? Um, I know Ian yes. Kutalaba took him down a lot. Yeah, I but think, that, how long ago was that fight? Yeah, it's years ago. But this is what I'm saying. Like yeah. you, you, these guys, like Jared, um, Jared, Jack Hermanson tried to take him down, and Jack is not like the most elite guy in this division, but he styled on him with the takedown defense. And if you don't, unless you have Jared hurt, you're not really going to take him down. Um, Marvin's a different animal, but Marvin doesn't really have the best chain wrestling. He's a brute. He's very strong if he gets his hands on you. But Jared's power has is one of the first guys that Marvin's fought that can keep him off of him with the power. And I could see a lot of what happened in the last fight with Roman Delice and Martin Vittori carrying over into this fight because they kind of fight the same way, but not really. Jared's just more technical, has better precision on his punching, um, and he's just a better fighter than Roman Delice. Let's just keep it real. Yeah, and you know, just to add on to the Jared point. Because now that I'm thinking about it, I mean, he it's not like he's he's shy of volume either. Like no. Jared, Jared, he'll he can he can fight with a lot of volume. Yeah, in his strikes, I'm saying so. he knows how to he knows how to rise to the occasion of his opponents. It's not like he's he ain't gun shy. That's yeah. What I'm saying. yeah, like the Izzy, the Izzy fight was boring, but that's because you can't make too many mistakes with Izzy, and yeah. also because that's how you kind of have to beat Izzy. Yo, Romero arguably took two rounds from Izzy by not doing shit. Yeah, and you know that's the thing. Like you don't want to make Izzy into a counterpuncher. So, but if you look at Jared's other performances, even the fight with Robert Whitaker, that fight was competitive until he broke his arm. He had his, he had his arm broken like in the second round, if I'm correct. And that was, Jared fought through that, still made this as a decision, if I'm correct. So, you know, it's, um, this fight's very competitive. The rounds are definitely going to hit. I, these guys are very patient. They're, they're going to be very respectful of each other. And they're going to be able to manage distance well with each other because Marvin's boxing has gotten a lot better. And Jared is a master, in my opinion. I think Jared does not get enough credit for how good he is. He's really good. He's just in an era with two of the greatest middleweights of all time and Rob Whitaker and, and, and Stylebender. But if those two didn't exist, I think he's probably the world champion. Let's just keep it real. Like, he he beats Sean Strickland. He probably beats Paulo Costa because Paulo Costa fights like a dumbass. Yeah. Um... He beats uh, Marvin Vittori and him are probably competing for the belt actively, you know? So, yeah, I, I like, I think there's value. If I think this fight could go down to split decision. And I've learned when you have a split decision, split decisions that are going to be close fights in your opinion, it's better to be on the dog side of the money. And Jared Cannon is Jared the dog. He's plus 100. Oh, shit. Okay. So, you know, there's a lot of reasons I like Jared in this spot, but I don't know how I'm going to lean. I want to see these guys on the scale. I want to see how they're talking during fight week. I don't read too much into that, especially with the low tier fighters, but the high tier fighters, I definitely do because I like to see where their motivation's at, especially since Marvin's not getting another title shot. Jared could get another title shot, but it's not enticing because their fight, his fight with Izzy wasn't great. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm, the, curi- the, I'm I'm curious to see how focused Jared comes in because yes. if he looks focused. I, I mean, ain't, ain't nothing can stop him. Man, People so. were fading him against Strickland, too. And they yeah. thought because Strickland's volume and this and that, what I tell you about that fight? I said, yo, Jared's fight IQ and striking defense and offense are so underrated. And you've seen it in that fight. He landed the bigger shots against Strickland, and he was able to pick him apart, even though Strickland did have his moments in that fight. Sure, but Marvin doesn't have anywhere near those um, those facilities with the striking. Um, but Marvin and Strickland did train together at one point, so... Who knows what's being relayed in terms of the information, but we've seen how that worked out with Strickland and Chris Curtis over the weekend with um, Imovov, and yeah. Imovov, you know, was was winning that fight. Yeah. You know, respect for Curtis is one of my favorite fighters to watch, but it, it's unfortunate. I mean, side note, I mean, the headbutt was two yeah. headbutts in a row too. It's oh, like, oh. It sucks for action, man, dude. But yeah. Also, side note, side note, he ain't quit. So I mean, nah, all that all that shit people were talking online about him wanting out. That's, that's that's dog shit. This man. dude has like forty fights. Come on, man! And you got everyone in the UFC is tough, man. Yeah, some are tougher than others. But you are gonna sit there and tell me that this dude with forty plus fights is chickening out? The yeah. guy the, Herzog didn't even give him five minutes. No, nah. he didn't give him five minutes. He give wanted, him the five he minutes. Wanted more time. Yeah, give, he would have went back in there blind. Yeah, no question. Yeah. He just the, all he said was give me give me something to wipe my eye because my eyes fucked up. Yeah, and they didn't hook him up, and he got jerked over it, man. I, 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 you know, I love action, man. I think he's great. I feel um, like they're giving him shit because you know he was honest. Oh, Jesus! You know, he should have just lied and said, "Yeah, I can see." But like, you know, fuck, man. If you can't see, man, you can't. You see. can't see. What do you want him to do? Yeah, you know. But and if he knew the fight was gonna get stopped, he probably would have lied. 
Yeah. Which is crazy, you know. But the thing is, all he wanted was his five minutes yeah, he just and a time. time. That's what and he, he wasn't time. granted that shit. So let's stop with the cap on there. But what I will say is. Yeah, back to the uh, main event here. But yeah, I, there's value in Cannoneer. And I think people are sleeping on how good Jerry Cannoneer is. I really do. This fight should be a pick em. Yeah, it should be. It, it should be. Cause I mean, it's pretty much close too, but you know. Yeah. I slight, want this line to slight, open up. Yeah. If it gets to plus 120, plus 130, Jared's definitely getting my money. Because neither of these boys are getting stopped, and I see it being close the whole way. But if, they, like I said before, if there's a stoppage on either side, it gen, it's Cannoneer. Yeah, no Cannoneer. question. Because you know. Mar- Marvin's not a big puncher. No. Um, does have good volume, yes. but, but Jared can keep up with that volume, and Jared hits like a Mack truck. Yeah. Um, and I know people are saying that... Um, um, Marvin has a granite chin, yeah, but against who? Roman Delice touched him the last fight and hurt him, hurt yep. him bad. So my thing is now you're dealing with a guy who's is not as big as Roman, but hits just as hard and has better precision and timing. And he's not going to tire as fast as Roman. No, nah, Roman Ro- don't got really a gas tank. So. Nah, Jared's a beast, man. Yeah. Jared's a beast. Killer Gorilla is real. Um, but with that said, the fight is definitely for this fight to go to distance. You parlay all the overs. I think this fight, these guys are very durable. It's going to be very hard to finish them. Um, and like I said, guys, Robert Whitaker broke this guy's arm and he didn't get finished. And no one has stopped Marvin in the UFC. Cinder block on, his, on those shoulders. Cinder block. Him and Rampage are like the, the are like fucking lethal weapon with, of cinder block heads. You know what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. Um, but yeah, to top it all off, the bet is this fight to go to distance straight. It's at minus 165. That's why I see it on DraftKings right now. Um, all other places, parlay the overs. I think all the overs hit. I think my brother agrees. The lean in this fight should be Marvin. The bet is probably going to be Jared. And that's how I'm, that's how I'm looking at it. Okay. So, um, but um, damn, that's all about UFC, huh? Right? UFC's, that's the last fight, yeah, right? that's it. That was the main event. Yep. And um, yes, guys. So you already know, end of the podcast. Follow, like, subscribe, comment, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Everybody watching currently on YouTube, please hit that notification bell. Please drop a like, drop a comment, and subscribe. And for all of you YouTube listeners, or audio listeners rather, because he just mentioned YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, And please follow us on our personal platforms as well, ladies and gentlemen, because we have Bellator and PFL fights this weekend, as well, Tim Zhu and... Um, oh, homeboy's name, Regis Progre, who no one talks about, all fight this weekend. Great fights. We're going to try and find some value for you guys. If not, enjoy the fights. Regis and Tim Zhu are killers in the boxing world. And I believe Yoel Romero fights this weekend too. So yep. follow us on social media because we're going to have some picks and, and some looks for you guys during and these cards. And the PFL side, we got um, Larissa Pacheco as well. Oh, so bet the house, Larissa well, Pacheco. No, she's fighting now that, that, uh, that other girl that they're pushing. What's her name? The uh, Kuna Kina. Oh, no, she's going to get. The one in the commercial. She's getting murked. She's getting murked. It's going to be Pacheco. Yeah, I think. it's Pacheco. But we'll, we'll see. Who knows? Who was that girl fought that's Pacheco's level? Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. Well, and, anyway, listen, we're not going to break that down yeah, now. Yeah. Follow us. You know what I'm saying? Boogie. Who go? Know what I'm saying? Also, at Access of Combat, anywhere and everywhere, you'll find us. Access to the planet, baby. Access what? of the galaxy. <laughs> Episode 17 in the books. Holla at your boys. Love ya.